Hi, and welcome to Fish Behind Glass. I'm Wise Guy. And I'm Waffle, and we're the host of Fish Behind Glass. A few years ago, I was given some very short-lived goldfish that led to us getting our first small tank. Over time, my dad and I have learned a lot about keeping tropical fish. We've actually gone and found out that there's a lot of information out there, and it's all spread out. So what we want to do is, is take that information and kind of put it all in one place so it's easier for you to find and learn. Um, we've made a lot of mistakes, but we've learned from them and we've had a lot of successes too. We will be learning about different types of fish and how to care for them, as well as keeping a healthy tank that can be enjoyed for a long time. It's best to know what kinds of fish you'd like before starting your tank to know that their correct water conditions will be met. You can create a wonderful home for your fish with just a little bit of know-how. If you know a little bit about biology, a little chemistry, and with a little bit of work, you can create a great habitat to sit and relax and observe. We are by no means experts in this field, but we do know quite a bit about tropical fish and community tanks. We don't know that much about goldfish or cichlids or saltwater tanks, but we're planning on learning about that kind of thing and we're going to document that and we'll make little shows about that as well. We want you to be able to go into your pet store with the confidence to pick out the fish you'd like and save you time and money. Fish keeping can be expensive but with the right know-how and saving techniques it can be very affordable. For the next 10 episodes we'd like to give you little hints and tips on how to have a successful tank. It can feel like all the information out there is kind of like this. So what we've done is, is broken this up into 10 parts so that you can see each part at your own pace and hopefully that'll be helpful enough to make it so that you can have a successful tank. Every episode will have one segment on a group of fish or a particular kind of fish. And another segment will be about certain aspects of creating your tank and creating their habitat for them so hopefully it'll all be helpful and um, we'll see how it goes waffle in this episode we will be looking at a group of fish called tetras tetras are a group of fish that are very popular among aquarists most tetras are hardy fish and work well for the beginning hobbyist a few require some special care, but generally are fish with a good temperament. These are just some of the tetras out there. The classification of tetras is as follows. It's an animal. It has a backbone. It's a ray fin fish. Order Caracaforms, and in the family Caracidae. Caracans and the subfamilies consist of freshwater fish, that's the main physical characteristic, is a small adipose fin that's located between the dorsal fin and the caudal fin. These fish include hatchetfish, African tetras, paku, piranha, and the genus Tetragonopterus. Hopefully, these classification segments are a little shorter to give me a break from these long words. <laughs> tetras get their name from the Greek word for square fin. Tetras have, in almost all cases, four unpaired fins. The adipose fin, a caudal fin that's in a V-shaped lobe, a long anal fin that extends along the bottom of most of the tail, and a tall dorsal fin that connects to the body in a short length. The bodies of these fish are usually compressed in width and tall in height. Some tetras are compressed in an oblong shape like glow light tetras. Most tetras are small as opposed to some of their Karakin relatives, which can grow up to two feet in length, as the black paku will do. Their colors and shapes are as varied as 150 plus species that exist in this genus. Tetras in their native habitat occur mostly in Central and South America. Most tetras live in New World rivers and tributaries and some lakes. Many living in the Amazonian river systems. African tetras, such as the Congo tetra, do fall in different family in a different family in classification. 
Vespa are still considered a tetra among hobbyists. These fish live in the Congo Basin. Tetras generally are a hardy fish that can handle a variety of conditions. Temperatures can range from 84 degrees Fahrenheit and as low as 64 degrees Fahrenheit. They like slightly acidic to neutral water. Some tetras, like Romeo-nosed and neon tetras, do need to be introduced to an established tank, which have gone through the tank cycle and has optimal bacteria and lower starter toxins like nitrite and ammonia. Many tetras can be helpful in starting a tank cycling process. Pristillas, red-eyed tetras, and glow light tetras make a great starter fish with the right care. We will discuss tank cycling in the next episode. Females tend to be a little larger and a little rounder than males with these fish. Tetras are indiscriminate egg layers, usually on leaves. Although we haven't tried breeding them, with a breeding tank, it's possible to breed them. The first thing when it takes to keeping fish is having patience. When you restock your tank, you want to do it slowly, either adding one fish or just a small group of fish at a time. If you put too many fish in at one time, especially if the tank hasn't been properly cycled, which is something we'll go over later, um, the toxins in the water will kill your fish and in the end you'll end up wasting your money. Um, so what you need to do is, is add fish slowly and make sure you test your water before you you end up making a lot of changes to it. Um, another thing you need to be patient about is also uh, feeding. When you feed your fish, uh, what you need to do is is feed them just a little bit every day. You don't have to feed them a huge amount because that makes them produce more waste, which is more toxins in the water, which then you spend more time taking care of your tank and uh, not sitting back and enjoying your fish. I don't mean to sound like an after school special, but the more you know is true in keeping fish. Uh, do your research. Uh, you can buy a fish that's two inches long when you start off with, and you could end up with a fish that's going to be two foot long in the future. So you need to know how big your fish are going to grow. You, know, you need to know what fish get along with other fish. There are some kind of fish that get along with other fish, but they don't get along with their own kind of fish. Um, the more that you read up on and find out about the fish that you like, uh, the better it will be for your tank to work as a, as a small ecosystem. Another thing you need for fish keeping is dedication. You need to be dedicated to feeding your fish, taking care of your fish, making sure that the water temperature is correct, that the chemicals are correct in it, and that everybody's doing okay and gets along. So some of these fish can live up to five, six, or even more years. Um, so you need to be prepared that some of these fish, when you get them, will live a long time. Um, and it's always best to make sure that you do check up on your fish every day. From time to time, you're gonna find that you're gonna make mistakes. What you need to do is, is learn from those mistakes. Um, not everything is gonna go right the way you want it to, so what's gonna end up happening is, is uh, when you do make a mistake, just realize what you did and try not to do it again. And uh, that's almost like one of the big things that what it takes in order to uh, keep fish. Um, as it goes along, uh, you'll make less and less mistakes and then you can come to the last part of what we're talking about here and what it takes to keep fish. Also, learn from your successes too and enjoy yourself. It can be a really fun hobby to keep fish. And as you stick to your routines and as you do these things and they work out for you, the work is minimal. Um, we'll tell you a couple little tricks that, you know, that help you get along a little faster that they don't kind of tell you on the internet and stuff that we've learned. And uh, you just got to remember those things. You just got to remember patience, um, 
do your research, um, be dedicated, um, learn from your mistakes, and enjoy yourself. If you could only come up with a, an acronym that would say, you know, what that is. I don't know, maybe someday we'll think of one. On the next episode of FBG, guppies, a great starter fish. And we'll also be talking about tank cycling and why that's important. So until next time, keep, keep on, on keeping. keeping.